Hey everyone, thanks for joining us here at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer here with Practical Machinists, and today we're going to look at some programming techniques for profiling around a part. Uh, I got a little example here, just something our students work on, uh, aluminum block, where we're just cutting just a real basic rectangular profile on a part using the heel method. So we're using some step jaws, and uh, we're just going to interpolate around this part. Uh, we're using two tools here, one to rough, one to finish. So here I got an inch and a quarter indexable end mill and then a three quarter inch high speed steel end mill for finishing. Uh, what we're going to utilize is a sub program for both tools. So I'm going to show you a few techniques on how to incorporate one basic sub program for two different diameter tools at two different RPMs and feed rates also. Now looking at our indexable uh, tool here, we're kind of limited on our Z depth to go around this part. You know, our part's one inch thick, so we're going to profile around this part just slightly past that one inch depth to one inch twenty thousandths deep. Now, according to uh, the manufacturer of this tool, maximum depth of cut is one eighth of an inch. So we're going to have to do multiple passes around this part. So when we get into that sub program, we're going to put it into a looping motion too to do multiple Z passes around this part. Then we're going to tool change to our finishing tool. We're going to go back to that exact same sub program, change our feed to speed parameters, and interpolate around this also. We're also going to incorporate some cutter compensation. Uh, we're going around this part in a clockwise direction, so we're going to be using cutter comp to the left. So let's go to the chalkboard and we'll go over the technique. So on the board here, up in the upper corner here, I got our part. Our part is five and a half inches by two. Now those are our finish dimensions. And of course the uh, thickness of our part, one inch. And again, we're gonna go slightly past the bottom of that by 20 thousandths. Now the origin of my part, I'm gonna place in this lower left corner. So when we're using cutter compensation, we're gonna have to do a lead in and lead out of the cut to one apply our compensation and the other to cancel it. Now I got two different diameter tools and I'm gonna be utilizing the same sub program. So when I select my first position for my tool, for my lead in and lead out, I need to make sure that that distance off the part is large enough for my largest tool. It needs to be at least the radius of that inch and a quarter tool, which is 0.625. Uh, I'm just gonna make it simple for this example. We're gonna go one inch. So my X location from origin for that start point is X negative one inch. And I'm also gonna do a Y position of negative one inch. So my start position for this tool path x negative one inch, y negative one inch. And then I'm gonna do a straight line applying my cutter compensation. And then I'm gonna profile around this part in a clockwise direction. And then I'm gonna feed off of the part that exact same distance of one inch. And then I'm gonna cancel my cutter compensation moving exactly where I started. And when I go into a looping motion, that's gonna place me where I need to be to drop to the next Z depth and continue around. So looking at when we go into that looping motion with a roughing cutter, we need to make sure our Z depths are equal. So when I look at, again, my part is one inch, we're going 20 thousandths past the bottom. I'm gonna do Z passes with my rough cutter at negative 102 thousandths. So if I loop that 10 times, that'll place me at negative one inch 20 at the end of my roughing cycle. Now, since we're using the same sub program, for our rougher inner finisher, looking over when we go to our tool offset page, I'll show you this on the machine. Of course, we're gonna have, we're using cutter compensation, so we need to put our diameter of our tools. Some shops may opt to use radius, so make sure you verify that on your machine. So my roughing tool, the actual diameter is inch and a quarter, and then my finishing tool, three quarters of an inch. Now, the geometry that we're placing in our sub program for this profile is gonna be to finish size. So our roughing tool, I'm going to add 20 thousandths positive to my wear. That's gonna shift the tool 10 thousandths away from the edge of the part, leaving material for our finishing tool to come uh, through and finish that part to size. We'll flip the board around, let's look at the G-code. So now let's look at our uh, program. So again, we're using a common sub-program for both tools to rough and finish. And uh, what I did is I incorporated some variables. Uh, when we start using variables, this is an option on some machines. Uh, you know, most machines we have at the college here, we order them with that. So make sure you verify on your specific machine that you do have variables as an option. Um, so starting off, I got my program number and of course the name. And then I set my two variables. And this is gonna be for my Z depth. 
because it's going to be different from one tool to the next. So what I did is I called up variable number 100 and I said that equals negative 0.102. So when I go to my subprogram, I'm going to use that variable to replace my Z depth. So that's my roughing depth. And then the next variable, I set variable 101 to negative 1 inch 20 thousandths. That's going to be my depth for my finishing tool. So you'll see those when we get into our subprogram. And then from there down, it's going to look pretty much like a normal program. I got my safety line, G90, G20, G17, G40. And then I call it my one inch indexable end mill, G0, T1, M6. Next line, I turn the spindle on. We're going at 10,000 RPM clockwise direction. Calling up my work offset, G54. And this is where we move to that start point that we figured out is going to be far enough away from the edge of the part for both tool diameters. So X negative one, Y negative one. And then I call up the height offset for that tool and I move to a clearance point of three inches. And then my next line, I'm going to move right to Z0, the top of the part. You'll see that when we get into our subprogram and we call up our depth. So I'm moving right to Z0, the top of my part, turning my coolant down. Now the next line looks a little bit uh, odd, but since we're using cutter compensation in our subprogram, we're going to have two separate tools, so we're going to have two separate diameter offset numbers depending on which tool. So what I'm doing is I'm setting that diameter offset number before I go to my subprogram. That's going to be a modal command so when it reads that G41 in my subprogram it's going to use the last diameter offset that was called up from the main program. And the exact same thing with the feed rate. I got two separate tools. One's carbide indexable, the other one's high speed steel. So the feed rates are going to be different from one tool to the next. So that can't be placed in the subprogram, so I place it right here. All I'm doing is just setting modal commands for these two operations in the main program. So when it uses them in the subprogram, they'll be already active and modal. So I'm setting my feed rate 200 inches a minute for my indexable cutter. And then I call up my subprogram 2001, and I put it into that looping 10 times. So I'm going to go down 102 thousandths, cut around the profile going to come out of the subprogram back to the main. It's going to see that loop and it's going to loop that 10 times for a total depth of negative 1 inch 20 thousandths. So then we come over to our subprogram now. And again, the very first thing is I drop to my Z depth. And since I set that with a variable, I go to my uh, G1, so linear command, and I go incremental. I'm going incremental and I'm moving to Z variable 100. Going back to the beginning of our program, variable 100 was negative 102 thousandths. So the machine drops to that depth from where it is, zero. And then it's going to turn on cutter compensation. I'm going back to absolute positioning, and I call it my G41. And now this is where it's going to use that modal diameter offset number we set in our main program, D01, because it's not specified here. And then it moves to X0, the edge of our part. And of course, Y 2 inches, X 5.5, Y 0, and then back to X negative 1 off the edge of the part. And then I cancel my cutter compensation moving right back to where we started. So now it's going uh, back to the main program and since it's in a loop command, it's going to go right back to the beginning. Since it's already at negative 102 thousandths, it's going to drop down another incremental amount and so on and so forth. Once it, it meets that 10 loop command count, it's going to kick it back to our main program, which sends it up to a Z position three inches above the part. And it's going to call up tool number two now, our finishing tool. And now what I did here is I changed the variable because in our sub program for our Z depth, I used variable number 100, which up here to begin with was negative one inch two. Now what I just did right here is I changed that variable to our new depth, which is our finishing depth, to negative one inch 20 thousandths. So now when it reads this value in the subprogram, it's going to be overwritten by our finishing depth. And then basically we're repeating what we did with our uh, roughing tool. Turn our spindle on, here our high speed steel tool, 2500. Uh, M3, moving to the exact same position that we used for our roughing tool, X negative one, Y negative one. That's our start point. Calling up our height offset for tool two, moving to three inches above the part. And then I move right to Z0, just like I did with my roughing tool, turning the coolant on. 
And this is where I set my two modal commands that I can't call up in my subprogram. Diameter offset number two, so when it reads that G41, it knows which tool number to use. And then our new feed rate for our high speed steel tool, 30 inches a minute. And then I send it over to the subprogram. It's gonna do the exact same thing. But now when it reads this incremental depth from zero of pound 100, we overrode it over here with our new depth, negative one inch 20 thousandths. Notice in our main program, I did not loop that anymore. I'm taking it all in one pass. So then it's gonna go through and profile using the exact same uh, X and Y coordinates is our roughing tool. And it's gonna to kick it back to our main program and that's where I send it to my clearance point in Z and then to my home positions and end the program. Let's go ahead and load this in the machine. We'll go over, I'll show you a glimpse of our tool offset page uh, and then let's run this part. So we're over here at the machine tool. Um, I have our part loaded, all of our tools are loaded and set, programs in the machine. One thing I just wanted to point out, going back to our offset page, you know, of course I got tool one as our roughing tool, tool two as our finisher. Uh, one thing you always wanna make sure when you're using cutter compensation, make sure you populate your diameter values. So one is our geometry values for our tools. I got inch and a quarter for our rougher, 0.75 for our finisher. And then again, cause we're using the same sub program that is made to finished size. Uh, I add plus 20 in my wear offset for my roughing tool. That's gonna leave that material for my finishing tool uh, to remove. So we'll go ahead, we'll fire up the machine, and we'll make our cuts. So we finished up our part, everything worked great. And uh, just to kind of show you guys an example on how we can create a sub-program to do multiple passes by putting the machine into a loop, and we can use the same sub-program for roughing and finishing. Now on top of that, we could have added a chamfer cutter too to place around the top edge of this part. We'd use the exact same sub-program, the exact same technique to do that. So, you know, not just set to a rectangular profile, any kind of profile you want to work, the same technique works just great. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next time.